So let's say we have this baseball that's moving through space. And let's say initially at time zero seconds, it's at this zero meter mark. However, let's say one second later, it's at this one meter mark. Then another second goes by, now we're at the two meter mark. Another second goes by, now we're at the three meter mark. And let's say it continues to move with this trajectory. We can represent this motion using different types of graphs. And there are three major types of graphs you'll see in physics. Position versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs. So how do we represent this motion using a position versus time graph? Well, it would look like this, where this particular dot represents this time instant, because we know at time one second, we're at the one meter mark. So at time one second, we're at the one meter mark. So we would represent it with this dot. This dot represents this instant. And then we know at time two seconds, we're at the two meter mark. So therefore at time two seconds, we're at the two meter mark. So therefore the dot would be here. So this dot represents this time instant. And if you were to keep on doing this with each of these time instances, you would see a graph that looks like this. So this graph represents the motion of this baseball. However, you might wonder, how do we take this position versus time graph and convert it into a velocity versus time graph? So to understand how to go from a position versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph, we need to understand what a slope is. So this line has a slope of one. So how do we determine the slope of a line? Well, you need to know the rise over run. So we see this line has a rise of one and a run of one. So therefore a rise of one and a run of one will give us a fraction of one. One over one equals one. So therefore the slope would be one. So let's try another example. What about this particular line? Well, this particular line has a rise of three and a run of one. So if we have a rise of three and a run of one, that gives us a fraction of three. So therefore the slope of this line is three. What about this line? Well, again, a rise of one, a run of two. So that's one over two. So this has a slope of one half. However, we can also have negative slopes. For example, this line has a rise of negative one and a run of positive one. So if we have a rise of negative one and a run of positive one, that gives us a slope of negative one. So this line has a slope of negative one. And this line, again, has a rise of negative six and a run of positive one. So negative six over one gives us a slope of negative six. So we can have negative slopes. So in order to go from a position versus time graph to a velocity versus time graph, the key thing to realize is that the slope of a position versus time graph tells you about the velocity at that given time point. So what do I mean? So let's focus on this time one second time point. We see the slope of the position versus time graph is positive one. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity versus time graph is positive one. And we see this is zero and this is positive one. So what about this time two second instance? Well, we see the slope of the position versus time graph is positive one. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity versus time graph is positive one, the positive one. So again, the slope of the position versus time graph tells you what the numerical value of the velocity is at that given time instance. And we see for each of these time instances, the slope is positive one. This is a slope of positive one. So therefore we know the velocity versus time graph will look like this. The slope at each of these time instances is positive one. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity at each of these time instances is positive one. Again, this is zero, so this is positive one. So that's how you go from position versus time to velocity versus time. However, how do you go from a velocity versus time graph to an acceleration versus time graph? Well, it's the same idea. And the key thing to realize is that the slope of a velocity versus time graph tells you about the acceleration at that time point. So again, let's do an example. So let's focus on this time one second time instance. We see the slope of the velocity versus time graph is zero. This is a slope of zero. Because again, we have a rise of zero and a run of one. So zero over one is a slope of zero.
So we see at this time, one second time instance, the slope of the velocity versus time graph is zero. So therefore the numerical value of the acceleration is zero. And again, we see this is zero, this is positive one, this is negative one, and again, so this is zero, and the slope is zero, so therefore the numerical value is zero. And again, the same thing at this time, two second instance. We see the slope of the velocity versus time graph is zero, so therefore the numerical value of the acceleration versus time graph at that time instance is zero. And again, we can see it would be the same for this entire line. So therefore, the acceleration versus time graph would all be at zero. Because again, for this entire time interval, this slope is zero. So therefore, the numerical value of the acceleration is zero for that entire time interval. So again, as long as you memorize these two rules, you know how to go from a position versus time graph to velocity versus time, and how to go from velocity versus time to acceleration versus time. But something really important to realize are all of these graphs represent the motion of this baseball moving. The only difference is this graph focuses on the position versus time. This graph focuses on the velocity versus time of this object. And this graph focuses on the acceleration versus time of this object. So again, all of these graphs represent the motion of this object. They're all just focusing on different variables. But again, as long as you memorize these two rules, you know how to convert these graphs. So let's try another example. Let's say we have this position versus time graph and we want to find the velocity versus time graph. Well, remember the key point is to focus on a single time point. So let's focus on this time one second time point. We see the slope of the position versus time graph is positive two. We, this is a slope of positive two. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity versus time graph is positive two. Again, this is zero, this is one, and this is two, positive two. What about this particular time point? At this time six, second time point. Well, again, we see the slope of the position versus time graph is zero. So therefore, the numerical value of the velocity at that time instant is zero. Again, the slope is zero, so therefore, the numerical value is zero. What about this particular time instance? Well, we see the slope of the position versus time graph is negative one. So therefore, the numerical value of the velocity is negative one. Again, this is zero and this is negative one, so it would be negative one. So if you were to carefully check the slope at each of these time points and convert that to a numerical value, you would see the velocity versus time graph would look like this. So now that we know the velocity versus time graph, how do we go to the acceleration versus time graph? Well, again, remember the slope of the velocity versus time graph tells you what the acceleration is at that given time instance. So again, let's focus on this time one second time point. We see the slope of the velocity versus time graph is zero, so therefore the numerical value of the acceleration versus time graph is zero. This is zero. And again, this is kind of a boring example because we see the slope at each of these time instances is zero. The slope at this time instance is zero. The slope at this time instance is zero. So the slope at each of these time instances are zero, so therefore the numerical value of each of these time instances will be zero. So again, this would all we can see would be at zero. So let's try another example. But again, the key point is to focus on a single time point. So let's focus on this particular time point. We see the slope of the position versus time graph is zero. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity versus time graph is zero at this particular time instance. What about this particular time instance? We see the slope of the position versus time graph is negative one. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity versus time graph is negative one. Again, this is zero and this is negative one. This is where negative one would be. What about this time instance? We see the slope of the position versus time graph is around positive one. So therefore the numerical value of the velocity versus time graph is positive one. And if you were to carefully find the slope at each of these regions, and translate that slope to a numerical value of a velocity versus time graph, you would get a slope that looks like this. And this makes sense, because if we see the slope starts at positive one, but then it slowly goes to a slope of zero. So the slope starts at positive one, then slowly goes to a slope of zero. So therefore the numerical value should start at positive one and slowly go to a numerical value of zero. So we see that, we see the slope slowly change to zero. So the numerical value slowly goes towards zero.
And then on this side, we see the slope starts at zero and the slope slowly goes to negative one. So therefore the numerical value will start at zero and slowly go to numerical value of negative one. So this makes sense. So that's how you go from position versus time. However, how do you go from velocity versus time to acceleration versus time? Well, again, it's the same idea. The slope of the velocity versus time graph tells you about the acceleration. So again, what about this particular time instance? We see the slope is around negative one over six because we see a rise of negative one and a run of positive six. So therefore, the slope would be around negative one six. And it would be that same slope everywhere. If we were to look at the slope at this particular time instance, again, it's still a slope of negative one over six. Because again, rise of negative one, run of six. So that slope is constant. So therefore, if the slope throughout this entire time interval is negative one over six, therefore the numerical value over this entire time interval is negative one over six. And again, we see this is zero and this is negative one. So therefore negative one over six is around here. So this is what the acceleration versus time graph looks like. But again, remember all of these graphs represent the same motion. The only difference is each graph focuses on a different variable. So let's try a really hard example. Well, again, the key point is to focus on a single time point at a time. So let's focus on this particular time instance. We see the slope of the position versus time graph is around negative one. So therefore the numerical value at this particular time instance is negative one. What about this particular time instance? We see the slope of the position versus time graph is around zero. So therefore the numerical value at that particular time instance is zero. What about the slope at this particular time instance? Well, we see the slope is around negative six. And we know what a slope of negative six looks like. We already explained what a slope of negative six looks like. Rise of negative six, run of one, that gives us a slope of negative six. So this is a slope of negative six. So we can see this is around negative six. So therefore, if the slope of the position versus time graph is negative six, therefore the numerical value at this time instance is negative six. What about this particular time instance? We see the slope is negative one. So therefore the numerical value is negative one. Again, this is zero, this is negative one, so this is negative one. So if you were to check each time instance, you would get a, a, a graph that looks roughly around like this. And again, it's hard to find the slope at each of these time instances, but it would look roughly like this. And again, the slope here is negative one, so therefore the numerical value is negative one. So this is what the velocity versus time graph looks like. So how do we go from this velocity versus time graph to an acceleration versus time graph? Well, again, just focus on a single time point. For example, at this particular time point, we see the slope is around positive one. So therefore the numerical value would be around positive one. What about this particular time instance? Well, again, if you were to carefully make a straight line and look at the slope, it would be a slope of around positive five. So if the slope is around positive five, the numerical value is positive five. What about the slope at this particular time instance? We see the slope goes to zero. So therefore the numerical value would be zero. And all along this time interval, we see the slope is zero. So therefore the numerical value over this entire time interval is zero. These would all be zero. Because again, the slope is zero. So therefore the numerical value would be zero. So if you were to carefully plot each point, we would get a graph that roughly looks like this. And again, just focusing on single time points. Again, this time point, slope of positive one, so therefore the numerical value is positive one. Slope here is around positive five, so therefore the numerical value is positive five. So again, if you focus on, on one time point at a time and translate them, you're able to translate it into a graph. And again, remember the slope all along here is zero, so the numerical value is zero. So I recommend taking a screenshot of this image because these graphs represent every major graph you'll see in a physics class. So again, just take a screenshot. And also these are the rules. Focus on a single time point at a time, then find the slope at that time point, and then realize the slope of that time point equals the numerical value of the variable you're interested in at that time point. 
So again, if we have a graph that looks like this, we see for this entire time interval, the slope is positive one. So therefore the numerical value is positive one. For this time interval, we see the slope is zero. So therefore the numerical value during this time interval is zero for the velocity. Here for this time interval, we see the slope is negative one. So therefore the numerical value for this time interval is negative one. We see this is where negative one is. And then this region gets tricky. That's why I recommend taking a screenshot. Unfortunately, it's color coded. So you can see, and I draw what the slope is. So you can see what the numerical value is. So again, we see the slope starts at zero. So therefore the numerical value would be zero, would be zero. This is zero. Then we see the slope go to positive one. So therefore the numerical value is positive one. Then we see the slope go to positive two. So therefore the numerical value is positive two. Then we see the slope go back to positive one. So the numerical value is positive one. Then we see the slope go to zero. So the numerical value is zero. Then we see the slope getting negative. Here the slope is negative one. So the numerical value is negative one. Then we see the slope go to negative two, so the numerical value is negative two. Then we go negative one, so the numerical value is negative one. Then we go back to the slope of zero, so the numerical value is zero. So this covers pretty much every single example you'll see. So, so that's how you go from this position versus time to velocity versus time. And then we also know we can go from velocity versus time to acceleration versus time. So again, during this entire time interval, we see the slope is zero. The slope here is zero, the slope here is zero, and the slope here is zero. So the numerical value for this time interval is zero. The numerical value would be at zero. But then we see we have a slope of positive one, so therefore the numerical va value would be positive one. This time interval we see the slope is negative one, so therefore the numerical value we see is at negative one. Then we see the slope go back to positive one, so the numerical value is positive one. So again, this covers every example you'll see in a physics class. However, we can go from this position versus time to this velocity versus time. However, if we had a velocity versus time that looked like this graph, then we know the acceleration versus time would look like this. And again, it's the same idea. We just find the slope at each region and know that's the numerical value. And also, the derivative of acceleration with respect to time is the jerk. So if you're given the acceleration versus time graph and you need the jerk versus time, again, same idea. You find what the slope is at a given time, and that's the numerical value. So again, I just recommend taking a screenshot of this image. So in the link below, there's a video where I'm going to teach you how to take this velocity versus time graph to infer the distance traveled during this time interval. And also we're going to learn how to take this acceleration versus time graph to infer the change in velocity during this time interval. So these are very important rules you need to understand for physics and for the MCAT.